Okay, what I saw when I slipped over to YouTube was that you're there and you can see me. I cannot see the chat while I'm filming. So I'm just going to go ahead and film and you guys chat among yourselves. And then if I can figure out how to shrink this screen and um, get over to the chat, I'll join you. But I'm just going to go ahead and continue. Today in my kitchen, I am going to be making a dessert that many people ask me to make when I go to functions. And I'm hesitant to share it because it's so easy, you won't believe it, and I'm going to blow my cover. They think I'm a great cook. <laughs> this is super easy. And it's called um, pineapple cupcakes. And sometimes when uh, we're going to go someplace last minute, this is what I whip up and take. And the family asks me for it all the time. They, they want me to make it for every function we have. So, scanning over here to my mixer. I'll show you what we're using, if I can make this stay still. Stop that. Okay. Um, two ingredients. Super simple. Cheat. A yellow cake mix. A can of pineapple. And how I start it is I drain off about a quarter cup of the pineapple juice. This is pineapple and juice, crushed pineapple. And I take this off because when I've made it with the full can before, it was too much. It was uh, too sticky and moist and took much too long to cook and the, the cupcakes didn't um, rise like they should. So if I take off about a quarter cup, it's perfect. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take my cake mix, yellow cake mix, just give it a dump. I'm telling you, this is so easy. And the good thing about it is where your cake mix will tell you to add oil, add eggs, none of that. None of that at all. Just forget it. All you add is the can of pineapple that has um, a quarter cup drained out of it. So in it goes. And then you just mix it until it looks well blended. I'm so mad I can't see your comments because that's part of the fun of a live stream is talking with people. This um, this picture fills up my whole seven inch screen on my iPad and I can't see how to shrink it to also pull up my YouTube where the comments are. I'll try and figure that out for next time. So I'm invited you into my kitchen while that's Cooking, I'll just give you a 360 here so you see where I'm at. So, this is my kitchen. It's a little retro. It's kind of modern with a retro vibe. I like the 1940s. I actually designed the whole thing around this kitchen set. I found this for a steal at a nearby um, auction flea marketplace. I recovered the seats myself, uh, but except this uh, circle, I, uh, the old seats had um, this, you can see the over there, the uh, gray, that was covered the whole seat and it, had, it was all gray and it had polka dots and then that flower in the middle, but they were all worn down. I made a video on it so you could see that. And then it came with that matching hutch where the doors, right there, also have the uh, rose trim on it like the tables and the chairs do. So, yeah, I, I designed the kitchen around that. My broom closet and my pantry with roll-out shelves. And my mess here where I've got stuff I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be using. And back to my mixer. So, now at least you see where you're at. Now I'll tighten this down again. Okay. And that should do it for that. Now don't tell everybody at my church how easy this is because or my Bible study they always ask me to bring it. <laughs> And they think I'm such a great cook.
<clears throat> I've already uh, greased my, I like the mini muffins. I already greased my muffin tin with uh, coconut oil. I figured pineapple and coconut really go well together. So that's a good oil to use when making pineapple cupcakes. So I'm just going to fill these about three quarter full. And I got the oven heating at 350. Now the other thing I'm going to do today is um, for dinner, well actually for the whole week's worth of dinner, I'm pressure cooking two chickens. But I'm using my electric pressure cooker. And I love that thing. I mean, I, I never, it, it comes and says you can use it for canning too, but I would never ever do that. I don't trust it. I don't think it's safe for that. I don't think the manufacturer knew enough about it to say it was safe for that. I just use it for cooking food, and then I use my stovetop pressure canner, my Presto, for any kind of canning I do. So you'll be seeing that after I get these in the oven. And I'll show you how I do my chickens and whole chickens in the pressure canner. And then I'm going to tell you how I'm going to use those two chickens I'm cooking today for meals for the rest of the week or for canning or for um, freezing for meals later in the month. I suppose we don't have to have chicken every single night. Another good thing about this is if you're on a diet and you can afford the points for the carbs in this, the sugar and the flour, because of course it's a cake mix, it's going to have sugar, uh, you're, not, you're not having the oil in it that you normally would for a cake and you're not having the eggs in it you normally would for a cake. Just the pineapple and juice and the cake mix. So you can figure out your points on that. I forget what it is. I think it's Maybe even one point for one of these, two at the most. And they bake up really nice. Okay, there's those. And I'm also going to make some full-size cupcakes to use up the rest of the batter. My kids and husband just love these. They are deceivingly easy to be so tasty and good for you, considering if you compare it against other cakes. And so easy. Like I can get these out real quick and last minute when I'm invited to a party or an affair of some sort. All right, let me get my spatula and I'll get every bit of goodness out of there. Let's see where I put it. Okay, here it is. If you're asking questions, I really apologize. I just cannot see the chat. Okie dokie. There they are. Now I'm gonna, now for the next part, get rid of my box. Oh, and what I use this, this uh, drain juice for, sometimes on my cupcakes, I just put a little powdered sugar on but other times I make a glaze with the confectionate sugar and I'll put some of this, you know, mix this with the confectionate sugar and um, maybe a little um, vanilla or something into a nice consistency and then put the glaze over. It's good. Or you can even put it in a buttercream if you wanted to make a buttercream. All right, let me give myself some room here and pull over my... pressure cooker. Now this is an electric pressure cooker. It's 10 quarts. It's a large one. 
and it's uh, an Elite by Maximatic. I went ahead and spent the extra money and got the stainless steel insert. Norm, it does come with a Teflon, a Teflon insert, but I've got the stainless steel in here. And to make my chicken, first I put in a bed of veggies. I've got six apples that have been like quartered of apples, potatoes, six potatoes that have been quartered, um, a pound of carrots, couple of cloves of garlic, four stalks of celery chopped up, including the leaves, and one whole onion. Yeah, I think that's everything. So that goes in the bottom. And I rough chopped them, leaving them pretty big because you're pressure canning. You don't want everything to turn to mush. Alrighty. And to that, I add seasoning. Sometimes I put it on top after the chicken goes in. Today I'm going to put it in here. One really good thing about pressure cooking is that the pressure gets all the flavors through everything. So the chicken flavors go through the veggies and the seasonings go through the chicken and the veggies and get permeated. Really good. So my seasonings are one tablespoon of parsley, one teaspoon of ginger, uh, a half a teaspoon of allspice, uh, one teaspoon of, um, no, one tablespoon of my favorite poultry seasoning, and a teaspoon of paprika, a tablespoon of salt, and a teaspoon of pepper. That's everything that's going in here. All right, then... I just add the chicken. Now this chicken, there's two of them I'm putting in. With my nice large pressure canner, I can do that. I'm putting them right on top of the bed of veggies. And snug them down on their side a little bit. Let's see. Can you see in there? There you go. There's my chickens. Sorry for yanking you around like that. All right, then I'm going to add four cups of water. And I put the lid on. And I'm going to set it for meat. Now, last time I made these, I had set it for 30 minutes. And that was a little too much because I want everything to be cooked. But I want it to hold together enough that I can take the chicken out and not have it all fall in there. Because I want to pick the bones out. And it's easier if it's kind of still a bit together, not totally falling apart. So I'm going to set it for 22 minutes this time. So meat and chicken put it up to 22 minutes that's it so this will oh no it's not it I gotta put it on there now I got it on lock so it will pressure so this is going to count down and uh, first come to pressure and then it will count down the 22 minutes and then the pressure will come off by itself I leave it to do it on its own and then I'll be able to take the top off the top won't come off until the pressure is down all right, let me put these things in the sink. And I'm going to show you what I'm working on with my crochet. First of all, look at my tootsies here. See? See my slippers? I've been making slippers. So I'll take you out in my dining room. I'm carrying you all. All right, out to my dining room. Right there. All right. This is a pair I made for my husband. 
of slippers, crocheted. Now this pair I've made to donate to the um, Big Bear Homestead auction they're having for Alderman Farms because uh, Tommy has medical bills because he was attacked by those dogs. So I'm um, donating those. And this is another pair I've started, but I've just run out of this kind of yarn, so I have to go get more yarn. This yarn is fantastic. It's called Bernay Blanket Yarn, and it's super bulky, but soft, 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 and cushy. It's almost like a velour, but not quite. It, feel, it feels like you're walking on clouds when you're in these things. I love them. Okay, and the other... Things I've been working on. If you can see over there, I made myself a poncho. And this yarn is a Vanna White uh, denim. It's a denim variegated color with a navy trim and navy, um, what do you call this stuff? You know, all the trim is in navy tassels right and I made two other ponchos for two daughters and I'm starting this one for a third daughter and this one will have a darker gray trim so that's what I've been doing here now you're looking at my messy uh, hutch Okay, so right now I'm going to try and get back over to um, the chat. It may or may not happen, but I hope, I'm hoping that you saw what I just did. And let me see if I can get over there. Thanks so much for coming by and watching my first pop-up kitchen live stream here on the Bandanagramma channel. And if you'd like to see more, please comment down below. I'm thinking about doing these several times a week. Maybe maybe what I should do is, like, I did the two chickens today, and I can show you how I use those chickens. You know, each night when I'm making for dinner, by using the chicken, seeing how far I can make them go with the different meals, like chicken cacciatore and uh, chicken dinner and chicken fajitas, things like that. That would work, I guess. So if you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. It really helps. And um, share the videos if you want to share. If you have friends you think would like any of my videos, that would help too. And I'll see you next time on the Bandanagramma channel. Bye-bye.